Our first use of limits is going to be section 3.2, continuity, continuity of functions. I will give this a much faster treatment than, than the textbook does, and we'll see uh, how quickly we can get through this. Um, most of you probably already have some idea of continuity in your mind. You know what a continuous function is, and the definition you might have heard before, and, and it still really is the way you should think of it, is a, a continuous function is one that you can draw without ever having to lift your pencil from the paper. Right? That's usually what people go with. So for example, this function I've drawn here, uh, I, can, I can draw this entire line without ever having to lift my, my, my chalk from the board, right? my, my pencil from the paper. So this is a continuous function. It's continuous for all values of x. Meanwhile over here, this function, if I was drawing this, there's no way I can draw this without having to lift my pencil to jump from here to here, right? So it's a discontinuous function. Uh, we usually talk about discontinuities at single points though, so it's discontinuous at x equals a. And technically, if I sort of just covered up this part of the function, yeah, it is a continuous function all the way along here, and it's continuous all the way along here, but at this point x equals a, it fails to be continuous, right? It's got what's called this jump discontinuity. So there's the definition of continuity that you should have in your mind, right? You can, you can stick with that forever, that's totally fine. But now that we have limits, we can come up with a nice mathematically rigorous definition of what it means to be continuous at a point. So uh, I'll see if I can squeeze this in here. Uh, we say f of x is continuous, is continuous at x equals a. So we'll define continuity at just a single point. Continuous at x equals a if the value of the function f of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Right, so there's the definition of a function being continuous at the point x equals a. And it's just this equation here, it's a, or this equality, if the function value f of a is equal to the limit of the function as x approaches a. And it's, it's quite a simple phrase here, but it actually averts three things, right? It's three separate things. It says that f of a exists, right? It doesn't always have to exist. a might not be in the domain of the function. If you plug in a into the function, you might divide by zero or something, right? But it says f of a has to exist. Uh, limits don't always have to exist, right? But this says the limit as x goes to a of the function, that has to exist. So as you get closer and closer and closer to a, that limit has to exist. So there's the second thing. And third, that these two things have to exist and be equal to each other. All right, so the function value at the point x equals a has to be the limit of the function at x equals a. All right, so coming back to this, this is why this is continuous at all, at all points, right? If I look at any point here, right, just choose an arbitrary point a, well, my function value is indeed the same as the limit, right? As I, as I approach this point, or as I approach this point from the left or the right, I'm approaching that function value there. Meanwhile, over here, at x equals a, uh, what's the problem here? Well, the function value exists, right? I've filled in this circle here, so that tells me that's the value of f of a. The open circle means that it's not defined there, it's defined here. Uh, so there's the value, f of a exists, but unfortunately my limit doesn't exist, right? And why not? Well, because as I approach x equals a from the left, and from the right, I'm approaching two different values, right? This value down here and this value up here. So the full limit doesn't even exist, uh, which means I'm discontinuous at x equals a. And finally, I'm out of space to even write this, but that's continuity at a single point. When we talk about continuity over entire intervals, right? Like uh, here I'm saying for all values of x, it just means that it's continuous at every single point in that interval, right? So that's why. Uh, I can talk about my function being continuous, say, right here, or right here, or right here, or really, I mean, the x values, um, but it fails to be continuous at x equals a down there, right, because the limit doesn't exist in that point. But for all these other points, sure, the function value does actually equal the limit. So here's the good news. Good news. Most, most functions that we work with are continuous on their domain.
If you've forgotten what a domain of a function is, it just means every word's defined, right? All the values of x that you're allowed to plug in. Right, so most value, most functions we work with are continuous on their domain, uh, and discontinuous, discontinuous only where not defined. All right, for, uh, for example, uh, where is f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2. Actually, let's not say where is it discontinuous. Where is it continuous? Well, this is a, a rational expression, right? My function is, is what's called a rational function. It's one polynomial divided by another. And uh, what's its domain? Well, what values of x am I allowed to plug in? Anything. Anything at all, except I don't want to divide by 0, right? So what causes me to divide by 0? Well, plugging in x equals 2 causes division by 0, right? So that's the domain of the function. The domain is all values for x, every single real number, except x equals 2. And that's where I have my discontinuity at x equals 2. So continuous uh, let's say for all x except x equals 2. It's discontinuous at x equals 2. And the way you'd usually enter this in, into a computer program or something like my math lab, depending on the format they ask for. Uh, people like to use intervals, right? So I've got minus infinity to, uh, to 2, round bracket because I don't want to include 2, and I'm continuous from 2 to infinity, again, round bracket because I don't actually want to include 2. You use square brackets to include it, and I'm just going to union those two intervals together. Right? So as a real number line, it says I've got all numbers from minus infinity to positive infinity, but I'm going to skip over 2, right? So everything except 2. So most functions, if you want to know where it's continuous, just look for its domain, right? And uh, the domain, usually you're looking for things like, I don't want to divide by 0, or I don't want to take square root of a negative number. Um, but I said most. What's the exception to this? The good news is the exception is very limited. And it's going to be piecewise functions. So if I give you any function that's defined by just a single expression, it's continuous on its domain. But if I give you something defined piecewise, you have to be a little bit more careful. All right, so let's go back here. So the exception, exception is piecewise functions. So for example, where is, here's my function, f of x is going to be defined by three separate pieces. Minus 1 if x, oops, if x is bigger than negative 10 and less than minus 2, it's going to be 2x plus 3 if uh, x is bigger than or equal to minus 2 and less than or equal to 1. And it's going to equal x squared if x is bigger than 1. Oh, I've left off my x here entirely. There we go. All right, so there's my piecewise function. Right? It's defined uh, by these three separate pieces. It tells me that for different values of x, I've got a function defined by a different, uh, a different expression. Well, 
all of these expressions are defined on their domains, right? The domain of this expression, minus 1, is defined from x equals negative 10 to minus 2. This next guy is a nice linear expression, 2x plus 3. I'm allowed to plug in all values for x into that. I don't divide by 0 or anything. So I know all of these are individually sort of continuous where they're defined. The problem is they might not glue together nicely. And my advice for these problems is, uh, oops, I didn't finish writing this. Where is this continuous? My advice for these problems is really just to draw them. Draw them and see if they, if they piece together nicely. So let's, let's draw this function. What do we have? We've got minus 10. So there's uh, x equals minus 10. And I know at minus 10, my function is defined to be the value negative 1. All right, so I'll put minus 1 down here. Minus 1. At minus 10, my function, and it, I'm not going to fill in the circle because it's not actually defined at negative 10, so I'll just put a round circle. And it's minus 1 all the way as x ranges from minus 10 up to minus 2. So let's say this is minus 2 right here. And I'll put another round circle because it's not actually defined there. But all the way in between, it's uh, defined to be negative 1. So from minus 10 to minus 2, the function takes on the value minus 1. Open circles are the endpoints because it's not actually defined at minus 10 to minus 2, not by this piece of the function. Now what happens? At minus 2, what's my function defined to be? Well, here, this piece defines the function minus 2. And at minus 2, what do we have? f of minus 2 is... Uh, minus 4 plus 3, right? 2 times minus 2 plus 3, uh, well, that's actually minus 1. All right, so this could have defined my function to be any value, any value at all, but it turns out that piece actually defines at minus 2, it takes on the value minus 1. So it is actually going to glue together nicely right there. Uh, then what happens? Then it's a linear function, right? It's got slope 2, y-intercept 3, and because I know it's a straight line, all I have to do is figure out the function value at the other endpoint. So we'll say this is 1 right here. We'll go to the other endpoint of the central, x equals 1. And f of 1 is 2 times 1 plus 3. 2 times 1 plus 3 is 5. So it goes from 1, or minus 1, to up here. Let's say this is, let's say that's 5. So it's a straight line connecting those two points. Not drawing a scale, like I said, the y-intercept should be 3. That puts 3 way down here. The scale is a bit off, but that's okay. It's a straight line connecting those two points. Now what happens? Now, uh, for x bigger than 1, our function is defined by x squared. But what actually happens at 1? At 1, this wants to take on the value 1 squared, which is 1. Right? It never actually hits it, though. Right? It's just, uh, there's one right there. <laughs> now this, the scale makes this very strange. If I label that to be one, then this certainly can't be three. But anyway, let's, let's put it a little lower. All right, let's pretend that's, that's one. And then it looks like the x squared function. x squared function is a parabolic thing that looks like that. All right, so what's the problem here? Well, the problem here is these two pieces didn't glue together on their endpoints. And that gave me this jump discontinuity. Right, what's actually happening is the left-hand limit, the limit as x is approaching 1 uh, from the right of this function, as I approach 1 from the right, I'm approaching the value positive 1. Right? And the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of this function, as I approach 1 from the left, I'm coming in and I'm approaching the value 5. Well, those aren't equal to each other, meaning the limit as x approaches 1 doesn't exist. That's why we have this jump. All right, so I'm discontinuous at x equals 1. And I'm only discontinuous at x equals 1. Discontinuous at x equals 1. And we can say where it's continuous. Continuous on... I'm actually not going to go to minus infinity because it's not defined for values less than minus 10. So we'll just go continuous from minus 10 to, it's still continuous at minus 2, so all the way to positive 1, not including it. 
right? Because we're discontinuous at one. Then we'll skip one, so we'll union that with another interval that skips one and goes one all the way off to infinity. So just to recap, if you understand continuity from the perspective of a function is continuous means I, can, I don't have any of these jumps in it, I don't have any holes. Uh, I've only drawn jump discontinuities. There are other things that could happen. Uh, you could have something like this. Function goes along, it just happens to skip a, a value, and then it continues. So still here, it's discontinuous at A. Right, I can't draw this without lifting my pencil from the paper because I've got to lift over this hole. Uh, or you can lift over this hole and actually define it to be some weird value. Right? Just right there at A, I define it to take on this value that's, that's higher. Uh, so you can have discontinuities that look like that. Or you can have these essential or infinite discontinuities. Right? You can have a function that goes on and then it blows up to infinity. So you've got this vertical asymptote. And then uh, it could do anything after this, but usually it would come back from infinity and then keep going. This would again be a discontinuity of the function. It wouldn't even be defined here. Right? I can't draw this without lifting my pencil from the paper. So if you understand continuity from that point of view, that's fine. But now we have this nice uh, limit definition, this mathematically rigorous uh, definition for what continuity actually means. And continuity at a point means that your limit exists and it equals the function value at that point. Uh, and the good news is, uh, pretty much all functions you'll ever see, as long as they're defined by a single expression, they're continuous where they're defined. So all you have to do is look for points where it's not defined, that will be points of discontinuity. Otherwise, if you have a piecewise function, my recommendation is draw your function, figure out where it glues together, and if it glues together nicely or not.